NOAA has just released its January 2016 climate report. And we see that 2016 is continuing the trend from 2014 and 2015. So this video will take a look at what's going on with our climate. The NOAA data shows that January of 2016 once again shattered the global high temperature records. It was the warmest January on record. Overall, the globe was 1.04 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. Land temperatures were about 1.56 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. And ocean temperatures were 0.86 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. You'll note in this map there are no pixels here that show record cold. However, there are over 100 pixels that show record warmth. That's indicative of a warming planet. Let's take a look at the last two years worth of uh, climate data. Here we have the temperature anomaly going back to January of 2014. Of those 25 months, 24 of them have been in the top five warmest months on record. That's 96%. We've set 17 new individual month records in that time, including the last nine months in a row. That made 2014 the warmest year on record until 2015 came along and beat it out. So we have the top two warmest months on record in the last two years. So let's try a trivia question. What was unique about the record set in 2014 as far as high global temperatures were concerned? Here is the record. You can see that 2014 just beat out some of the previous years, including the fabled 1997-1998 El Nino year. Well, that was a hint to the answer to the question. 2014 was unique from the point of view that it set a new high temperature record and was not involving any El Ninos. So it even beat out the strongest El Nino year on record to date without having an El Nino component in the weather. And that is a truly stunning statistic when you think about it. So let's try a second trivia question. What was unique about the record set in 2015? Here is that record, and the unique aspect of it is fairly evident. It is that the margin by which it beat out the previous record year was the largest ever recorded. Compare it to the 1997-98 peak, and you can see there's been a strong warming trend. What the global warming denialists like to do is to compare the 1997-98 peak with La Nina years and claim that there's been no significant warming. So they're comparing apples and oranges. In this case, we're comparing apples with apples and you see that the warming trend is still there and still very strong. Another favorite of the global warming denialists is to start talking about sea ice and of course getting it mixed up with the ice cap, but we'll not bother with that for the moment. They keep on saying how much the Arctic sea ice is recovering. Yet in January of 2016, it set a new record low. And you can see that the trend is steadily downwards. The trend over the long term has been losing nearly half a million square kilometers of ice per decade. Now let's take a look at the Antarctic. This has been made much fuss of recently with record high areas of sea ice. However, in January 2016, the sea ice level in Antarctica fell below average. You can also note that the drop in sea ice from January of last year to this year is the largest on record. You can see here that the sea ice area is increasing by a quarter of a million square kilometers every decade. So if the Arctic is losing about half a million square kilometers and the Antarctic is gaining about a quarter of a million square kilometers, the net sea ice around the globe is losing about a quarter of a million square kilometers per decade. Accompanying all these changes, there's lots of weird weather around the globe in January. We had Hurricane Alex, which was the first hurricane to form during January in many decades. We had hot spots around the world with record temperatures in South America, Africa, Australia, Siberia, and Alaska. We had a few cool spots, China and northeast of the USA. And we had one very wet spot, which was in Argentina, where major flooding occurred early in January. So what does 2016 hold in store for us? According to the models, for the next few months will still continue with fairly warm conditions. As the El Nino conditions decay, by mid-year we should be in Enso neutral conditions. Only one model shows a revival of the El Nino. By the end of the year we could be in La Nina conditions, 
And the question will be, is it going to be a weak La Nina or a strong one? Even so, with all this uncertainty, I predict that 2016 will be one of the top 10 warmest years on record and probably in the top five. You heard it here first. So to paraphrase Sonny and Cher, the heat goes on. Yes, it goes on. It gets bigger and